So today started off chasing parts. We had to make a trip down to Lancaster, and from there we drove all the way up to Delaware, all the way up to the Jegs warehouse. A friend of Billy's let him know that he had a box full of good used rocker arms that fit these Brodick cylinder heads. And it's always a good idea to have spares. So we picked up these rocker arms, made our way up to Jegs to pick up some intake gaskets up in Delaware at the main warehouse. And about that time we figured out just exactly what these cylinder heads are. Thanks to our friends at Brodix, they were able to take the cylinder head number and tell us not only exactly what the heads are, but who the original owner was. We've been building high performance engines for over 30 years. A normal year we run 104 races and we depend on this product greatly. In the world of sprint cars, the name Gertie is recognized as one of the innovators. With the history of building winning motors for such names as Jeff Gordon, Ken Schrader, Ryan Newman, Tony Stewart, Steve Kinzer, and Sammy Swindell. Earl Gertie founded Gertie Racing Engines in 1969, quickly became one of the top performance businesses in the Midwest. Based out of Rochester, Indiana, Gertie founded the business in his two-car garage with $1,000 in some performance parts. Initially building engines for drag racing, Gertie grew the business into oval track racing. He built engines for many short track racing's top stars, most notably 20-time World of Outlaws champion Steve Kinzer and three-time World of Outlaws champion Sammy Swindell. The business was eventually handed down to Earl's son and daughter, Joe and Brenda. And Joe Gertie continued the family legacy and continued to operate the business before it was sold in 2017. So it's Tuesday night. You out here? Almost dinner time. I go out to check on Billy. He's out there in the shop inspecting these rock arms to make sure they're going to work okay. Mom's got dinner ready. Chicken and noodles. Right. Work on that after dinner. Trying to get that intake manifold put back on, get these rockers on, and readjust them. Yep. So... You called Brodix, and what did they tell you about these heads? Well, first they said their system was down. They couldn't look them up. And then I kind of got to talking to him a little bit, told him what we do and stuff. And then he, he must have talked to somebody else that had a little more knowledge than the computer. And um, they found that it was a special ordered head from Earl Gertie. Um, 1994 is when they were made. They were a 12B spread port head ported by Weltech. Weltech. So, pretty pretty interesting stuff. I thought they were an 18 year head just because that's what you know the previous owner said, but obviously they're not. They're a 15 degree head. Wow. Pretty nice head. Um, back in the day, that was like top of the line. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And they were sold specifically to Earl Gertie. Special ordered. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. A little history there. Yeah, I guess he was pretty big. Um, I didn't know who he was, obviously, because I'm not in like the sprint car world. I don't know all that stuff. But uh, when they said that name, they were like, you know, guy's pretty well-known engine builder. Mm -hmm. There's a show how long those Brodick's heads last. They were brand new the year your mom and I got married. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Almost makes me want to take them off and just set them on a shelf. <laughs> but kind of want to run them. They're a good head. So after dinner, Billy and I went back out to the shop I went ahead and got the intake manifold gaskets installed, got the gasket surfaces cleaned up, cleaned up the intake manifold, and Billy worked on transferring out the broken rocker arm off the shaft and putting the new replacement on.
All right, guys, so we got the uh, engine all back together. The valves are adjusted. Um, intake manifold's back on. And we pulled the converter out of the transmission and went ahead and switched the stator in it. Billy, what stator is in it now? A 14? 1440. 1440 stator in it right now. 14 blades, 40. Yeah. Angle. And then what was it we just took out of it that was so tight? Uh, 12 35 12 35 I think. yeah 12 35 so the 12 35 five was really tight and we had it set up spragless um, so we put a mechanical diode back in it and put it back exactly the way it was the night that it blew up because it was flying with that that combination before and this one doesn't quite make as much torque and wants to rev a little higher so we're thinking that maybe that converter combination may be just right. And then did you order a, a 410 center section? I did. So he called Tony McKinney today and ordered a brand new Mosier 9-inch third member uh, with a 410 ring and pinion setup. Currently it's a 370. So we're going to try and set this thing up. We think that the, the 410 versus the 370 is going to help the converter because the drive shaft is going to spin a little bit easier because that converter setup was a little bit loose before. But we're thinking with a 410 gear and this engine that likes to turn more RPM, we're thinking maybe that's going to be a little bit better for us than what we had. So we'll see. Tomorrow we plan on putting the converter back in the truck, setting the engine back in it and firing it back up again. See you all later.